today I'm doing something interesting. I and Jacob, my boyfriend, are staying in a glamping dome. And the reason I wanted to do this is I love cool rental spaces and cool alternative housing things. I have, of course, the vintage camper that I've turned into an Airbnb. And I actually charge $99 a night for that max. This place is $350 a night and is more than I spent on a carnival cruise. So we're doing a video so I can write this off of my taxes. <laughs> Let's be honest. So Jacob and I are staying here. I've wanted to stay in a glamping dome for a long time. I would love to own one of these one day. And this is located about 45 minutes outside of Austin, Texas. So we're in the hill country. This is one of eight domes on this property and it looks like more are being built. Each of them come with either a hot tub or a stargazing dome, which is right there. And we chose a hot tub option. All right, let's go in. All right, this is our deck here, our little porch, and there's the hot tub. Let's check it out. Oh, look at that. It looks beautiful. Well, I cannot wait to get in that. And then there is a little bit of privacy screening right here, but it doesn't go all the way across. <laughs> and then a little kind of old outdoor patio, but it's Texas and the sun and that happens. Let's go inside. Alright, so we have just dropped our stuff. The first thing when you come in is this little kitchenette. I admit, I was a little bit disappointed that there's no cooking options here. There's just the microwave, toaster, and a coffee maker. But we were left a little bit of coffee and a little bit of creamer, which is so nice. When I went and saw an A-frame in Texas, there was no coffee and we were very disappointed because we had to go all the way into town. You're also left a few bowls, plates, mugs, and weirdly some metal bowls. Uh, the stuff on the top is ours, we already unloaded. There's a little sink, a very small fridge, and then it looks like a, uh, a very odd assortment of silverware and grilling tools. I believe there is a grill somewhere on the property we're allowed to use, as well as a sun oven, which is fun. Let's go in here. Very cute little acrylic table. I love this because it completely disappears visually and yet it's very useful. So that's very nice. They have a guest directory here. And as an Airbnb host myself, I would have taken off this sticker, but details, <laughs> come on in. So here is the floating king bed which seems nice, I already sat on it, and there are a couple of little end tables with a few games over there. There are a couple of chairs where we can look out at the view, which I'll admit is mostly the gas station, but it's still pretty. And there's also that electrical panel right there, which I might have covered with some sort of fencing. But yeah, I'm sure the sunset is going to be gorgeous here. I've seen some of the pictures. I also think this lamp is really cool and that they have these shades that can draw. So you can, if you are like a, you want to sleep in or the sun bothers you, if you're trying to sleep, you can close yourself off. We have a cool moving TV, which I think is a really, really neat thing because you can watch it from anywhere, including the bed. And thank God there's a fan and an AC and a heater. This is all set up really, really cool. Over here, there's a decorative plant thing. And up here, there are some stairs. Um, and under here, it looks like there are some heated blankets. This is quite a climb, but manageable, even in a dress. A little bit less headroom, but this is really cool. There's an extra bed up here. It, I believe the website said it was a twin extra large, and you can look out over. Don't lean on that. Oh, do not lean on this. <laughs> These are very movable, but the bed looks lovely. And if you have like a kid or a group of three or something, this would totally work. This is very cool. What was the wood thing you were talking about, Hunt? I was talking about the fact that the corners of this are already poking through That's not both good. over it there and over there. Oh, little light. A little precarious, but it was fine. I've been up worse. Over here in this little corner, there is a mirror and a place to put your suitcase and a little table, which is nice. And a tiny little closet, which I've already hung my purse and keys in, but I'm not sure it could fit actual any clothing. <laughs> I think these little windows, these cutout windows down there and up here and all over the place are so cool. Yep. I love how they have you can walk all the way around the dome and everything's in the center. Be able to see the coyotes looking in at us. <laughs> Let's go to the bathroom. Alright, so this is exactly as we found it. Toilet. This is like a handicap shower, I guess. Sink, makeup pads, ooh, lighted mirror. 
Oh, and it looks like they have really lovely custom shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, which I do in my unit too, which is really nice. Oh, this is a handicap shower. Look, it's got the seat. How lovely for people who need it. Bath mat, beach towels. These are a little raggedy, not gonna lie. And then a first aid kit, a hair dryer, and this is nice that there's a place to hang your wet beach towels from the hot tub, so all works. Another little portal. And there's a little cubby here. It's a very nice use of space, considering all of the angles. A few things off the bat, the gas station is not gorgeous, <laughs> but I'm not sure they could help it or not. It's a very cool place. I happen to know that these glamping pods are actually not that expensive, which is one of the reasons I'm really interested in them. You can purchase one of these for like eight to $15,000. And then of course you have to get the electricity and all of the paneling and everything work done. I'm sure these cost more than that to set up, but compared to an actual house, cheap as hell. And charging $350 a night, they could make that money back pretty fast. Jacob, do you have any thoughts? I'm pretty impressed, not for $350 a night. Um, Are you gonna talk about the Wi-Fi? Oh, please tell us about the Wi-Fi. So, in our handy dandy guide directory, it said you can't watch anything in HD. You have to turn it down to 720p or less because there isn't enough bandwidth. So for $350 a night, you don't even get to watch a YouTube video in HD. I would expect good internet here for that price. And what else? I mean, you, you weren't particularly enamored with the idea of a glamping dome in the first place. Can you tell us why? Well, it's a tent. <laughs> I saw on reviews that it gets hot. Mm -hmm. And the reviews that said that were from the early part of this year. Well, it's March now. Yeah. It's only going to get hotter. It was almost 90 degrees today. So... And there were other reviews that said, you know, their trip was completely ruined by construction. I'm guessing of those units back there. And honestly, if I was woken up at 6 a.m. with construction for a place I was paying $350 a night for, I would be pissed. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Hopefully. I'm not saying that's going to happen to us, but that's what some of the reviews said when we were reading them. There's no kitchen area. Yeah. We're going to have to go out to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that the gas station isn't going to just be like this blinding lighthouse. I think some of the reviews said that it, the light shut off at like 11 p.m. so you can see some of the stars, but I'm guessing that was negotiated with the, with the place. I am also disappointed at the kitchen. We're an hour outside of Austin. Normally for something like this, if we wanted to get away, we would bring some food to cook so we didn't have to come and go all day. Obviously some vacation rentals are in a city. You want it to basically be a place for you to stay, but even the ag wagon has a stove and like some basic stuff where you could cook if you wanted. I didn't like the parking situation. Oh, great. So you're allowed to come up and offload, but then you have to way down that hill. Can't see you it. can't even see it. It's back behind those bushes and then hike back up, which is unfortunate. I get it. There's not a lot of room out there between the domes, but one to two cars per dome. Yeah, I'm guessing they just think it would get I don't think it's unreasonable to want to park next to the place where you're staying. Mm -mm. If I was paying this at a hotel, I could park right outside. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. All right, well, aside from a few other things, this rug, which is kind of all ripped and torn up. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't allow pets. This one looks like a cat got to it. Yeah. I don't want it to seem like I'm crapping all over it. It seems very clean. I, I reserve the place because it's a unique stay that I've never been in before, and sometimes you pay for an experience. So I will report back in on how it goes. Uh, but this is the glamping dome. Wish us luck. We do get a sleeping mask and some earbuds as well as amenities. So that's nice. There's also a place down the hill that has a grill and supposedly some hammocks, which could be lovely. It looks like it's lit by fairy lights or Christmas lights. You are not allowed to be in the bubble tent outside the hours of 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. from November 8th March 14th. So you can only be in the tent from and 5 in the afternoon to 8 a.m. If you try and go in the tent at 8.01 a.m., that's against the rules. And it had another set that was essentially you're only allowed to be in there when it's dark, which is kind of weird. Why can't you go in during the day? I mean, I guess there's no point. It's a stargazing tent, but why can't you use the space if you want? Well, if you want to have a picnic. It's just a little weird. Also, this door is a little busted. They did a really beautiful job with all of the decking. This is magnificent. And I am just kind of looking and this tent seems to be holding up really well. For my research, these seem to last like 10 to 20 years, depending on the conditions, of course. So they're not permanent structures, but 
This is really, really neat. It's very cool. I gotta admit, it's so cool. And if these Airbnb hosts or anything like me, they just heard me say that on the ring camera. Because if you say something cute about my Airbnb outside, because I check when people check in, um, there's a voice recorder on it. And so if you're checking in, you're like, oh my goodness, it's so cute. I, I hear it and it, I get excited. <laughs> okay, so these go across here and it interferes with the fan. Jacob's having problems. I realize this is very nitpicky, but once again, at the price per night, something should just be easy. All right, show us how the things work. Well, the way the fan was, if I had it where it was, it would have gotten pulled into the back of this. Yeah. Which means that the fan's not gonna work. Those are kind of cool, the way the curtains work. And it does look like it'll block out most of the light. See? Hmm. Yeah. I like it. Like stops. Don't go this way to the bathroom at night. It's uh, very cozy with the curtains drawn. It's a lot smaller. So, I come over here. I want something to drink. I knew we'd already put stuff in the fridge. Well, I pull it out and it's, it's room temperature. So, I'm like, hmm. Well, I feel around the fridge. The fridge isn't cold. It's, it's also room temperature. There's some ice. You know, like it's frozen over on the top part because it's got one of those little tiny little freezers. But I mean, nothing's cool in here. It's not cool to touch. Nothing's being cool. And we have drinks and food and creamer and stuff in there. On top of that, I can't actually see anything. The only light we've got is a lamp behind Sarah. So I think, okay, well, you know what? Light switches are here for a reason. Well, this light switch works for outside. I'm not doing me any good, clearly. This one is a dummy. This one is a dummy. The one behind here is a dummy. Um, the range hood fan works. That way you can, I guess, ventilate the toaster. Doesn't do me a lot of good though. Um, the light, which is the bulb is right here. No light on the range hood. And there are two lights. There's, There's light one right there. There's one right here. You can't see anything. It's yeah. Dark. And a bunch of the other lights switch around seem to also do nothing. We like I literally have to we use... check the breakers. Nothing's blown. So I messaged the people. I have to use my phone to like look. I just think it's a little odd. And there's one thing you don't want to deprive Jacob of, and that's like a nice cold monster or water or drink. Well, I don't think it's unreasonable. It's not to, unreasonable. To want to put yourself in the fridge and no. drink something cold. Run out because it's very hot on this side where my hand is. Like it's very warm to the touch and it's what's complete. probably keeping it from stinking is the fact that this there was ice in here I guess I don't know when it stopped I'm surprised the ice isn't dripping though since it's room temp in there well, I don't know when it would have gone off I'm also surprised we've only been here two hours able to illuminate the place the light switch is on the other side of the bathroom which is halfway around the pod. But the fridge still doesn't work, which is unfortunate. So the property manager got back to us about the frozen fridge. She called, asked if we checked this out and the other thing we did, and she offered to move us to a different pod that definitely has a working fridge. And it's actually one of the new high rise ones. And she said, it's more luxury, it's nicer. Uh, Jacob isn't thrilled about moving, but we do want a working fridge. So we're gonna, we're gonna head on over. I'm sorry, baby. Let's go. All right, we made the move to pod number eight and this one is beautiful. You can tell it's much newer. Very cool. Also like kind of a different, slightly different dome. Yeah, awesome. I'll give you all the tour tomorrow. All right, now we're going to bed. Jacob had to climb through the gate. I don't think our car weighs enough to set off the automatic thing from the inside or it just wasn't working. Hello. I'm on a swing. <laughs> so the new Airbnb dome is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to show you later. But Jake was napping right now. So let me show you outside because that's where I am. I was just up on the upper deck, which has the hot tub, some um, benches and chairs, and this cool like floaty lounger. And I was in that for a while until I got too hot. Um, by the way, I think I also figured out why the stargazing domes 
are closed during the day, I'm pretty sure that you could like get a heat stroke from being in one of those. The bubble really like pulls all the energy in. You can actually, so this open spot right here, this is not our dome, this is our neighbor's dome, but they're not there, so it shouldn't matter. Um, I'm not sure how they have the windows open or the curtains pulled back. On ours, it is so bright outside and so hot near that window because the sun's coming in that we've had to keep our curtains closed all day and it is like hot. It's also very bright in there. I'll show you when we get up. But underneath, which is really cool, there's like a hammock on my neighbor's side. I'm in one of these. And, and surprisingly, it's very secure. No issues with like the weight and it's, it's quite lovely. So all of the lounging spaces are beautiful. I'm a little scared to get into that one because it seems very high off the ground. I think I actually might've gotten a little sunburned being upstairs uh, on the little deck. But yeah, the, the weather's gorgeous gonna lounge and do some stuff on my computer. It appears that they're building a bunch more over there, which are even taller than these. Very cool. Also from like, and if I ever wanted to build one of these things, this drop down for the hot tub is really interesting. Zoom you guys in. So the hot tub is set into the deck. You don't have to climb up into it, you climb down into it. And I was wondering what the support structure was like below. You know what, I bet I can see it right here even better. Oh yeah, here we go. That's interesting. And it looks like the power and the hot water heater box are right there as well. And that was lovely. I got into it last night and it was 104 degrees when I got in. I put on the bubbles and I watched some TV and it was, it was beautiful. Um, we did go to bed. I did go to bed by 11 and the lights on the gas station were still on and so that's what you could mostly see. But if you looked up, there were more stars than you can see in College Station. So that was nice. And I bet after 11 when the gas station lights go out, it's really, really pretty out there. We just conked out. <laughs> it's hard not to fall off of this hammock, but it's amazing. So new tea. I ended up having a conversation with a cleaning lady who was around. You know, I complimented the property and everything. And she just kind of told me a few things. One, these are going in by the summer. So that's fun. And two, the gas station came after the glamping domes, which is the biggest complaint in the reviews and i get it because it kind of ruins the view but like what are you supposed to do if you don't own all the land supposedly the owner is trying to like put up something to block it but it's going downhill it it would have to be a massive thing i feel really bad for the guy that would that would be really devastating to build something as cool as this and then have like a giant eyesore get built next door so that's so tough and yeah, you know, I've been looking for land for a couple of years myself now and that's one of my biggest like concerns is finding like an acre or a couple of acres and then something monstrous comes next door and kind of ruins it. So I, I feel bad for the guy. That's, that's that. Also, she did confirm the reason you can't go in the bubble tents during the day is because you will get heat stroke and die. <laughs> it's way too hot in there. <laughs> so all good info. I'm glad some of my theories worked. <laughs> This is lovely. I also just noticed that this little uh, LED string lights or LED strip lights all along up underneath here. So, and we didn't notice it last night, but I bet it's just gorgeous under here at night. And the breeze is so nice. This is, this is great. There are no real lights out here, but Jacob is inside. I'm in the hot tub and it's lovely. Let me flip you around. Right. So there's a big beacon of light from the gas station, but oh, you can't. the stars are pretty. It's a little cloudy tonight, but the stars are uh, lovely. And I'm gonna watch TV in the hot tub. We are at the second dome we checked into here at Udoscape, and it's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for you to show it. We're about to check out, so let's go see it. But first, this hot tub was incredible. It was absolutely amazing. It stayed at like 104, 105 degrees and I partook in it both last night and the night before. Fantastic. Also the lights at the gas station did turn off at 11. So that was nice. And I was able to see the stars. And at this dome, the cleaning people told me that uh, these new domes only opened about two weeks ago and they have obviously a lot more luxuries. I think that the owners 
had a really cool idea with the original domes and then they took everything that they wanted it to be and implemented it, to, it into this. I cannot wait to show you the inside here. But on these decks, there is a grill, which is nice because that's an additional place to cook if you wanted. And then they have these lovely chairs and that hanging hammock. And as an Airbnb host, I love that they actually have the chairs kind of bolted to the ground so you don't have to keep moving them around. I think that was really clever. Grill. Oh, okay. Yeah, the solar cooker is in like a little bag in the kitchen. Also, the way that they have these positioned means that even though we're very close to our neighbors, we can't see in their pods unless their windows are open and you're like right there. But if you're on the porch, if you're in the hot tub, you cannot see into your neighbor's dome. You can hear them, but you also can't see into their hot tub. There's that little screen of privacy there. And I think that was just really, really nicely planned. Um, also the fake trees over here make it so people downstairs can't really see up into your dome. And overall, this was just like meticulously thought out and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Come on. I laid in this yesterday, it was really fun. So these are obviously up a set of stairs, which we share with our neighbor. And underneath there are a couple of hanging hammocks and swing chairs. And I watched TV hang out in those yesterday afternoon. It was lovely. So first off, there's a very cute little modern bathroom, soft closed toilet seats is something I always appreciate, and Jacob didn't love how small the shower was, I thought it was plenty big, obviously the shower in my Airbnb is a little smaller, but there's like the touch light here, beautiful fixtures, I will say these do not, this is the only place to hang your towels and they do not dry, and we are probably only the second or third people to stay here. The shelves aren't even up in here yet. Not that we needed them, but just I thought it was cool that we were obviously that early. There is a step down. <laughs> and then over here, there is a much better ladder um, going up to the loft. We didn't go up there. We didn't want to muss it. But you can see that I think these domes are actually smaller because in the other dome, you could actually stand up upstairs and walk around. And this is just a very small area just for the bed. In here we have an absolutely lovely view and I cannot tell you how many improvements there are in this. I'm so happy for the owners and that they were able to figure out how to make this even better. So there's a chair and sitting area over here, which is a lot better. I probably would have put a little couch in, but these are not that comfortable, but that's fine, each to their own. What I really love is that these curtains are much more custom to the space. Look at that. So in our first dome, the curtains kind of fell right to the end of the bed and they were just on rod hangers. These are actually custom into the dome and they did a much better job. It is very light in here, even if the curtains are closed, if it's sunny out. Yesterday we had to keep them closed all day because it was very sunny and therefore got very hot. But I think that's just the dome thing that you get to <laughs> deal with. We also figured out that they left us sleeping masks, which is nice because of that sunlight hole right there really blast you in the face in the morning. The bed was very nice, if a little bit soft for us, but what I really, really, really love about this whole setup is all of this storage. Our first dome didn't have any. We just had our suitcases on the floor in the corner and there wasn't nearly as much like footing space to go around. This has, each side has a little custom cabinet and then a little custom cubby with outlets. So each side has a little cubby where you can plug in your devices and you can actually access them from when you're laying there, which is fantastic. You can also turn on the lights from one of the cubbies. And there's this cool little back shelf where you can put your water and your phone or your Kindle and stuff. I now want one. But I think this whole setup is brilliant and so much better than the first dome. I kind of want one of these for my house. The walking TV is really cool. I actually did notice that one of my neighbors had moved it in front of their dome so that they could watch it from the hot tub, which, brilliant. And then even this little chair setup is a little bit better. The other had a single pillar in the middle of the table and it was wobbly. And this is like an improvement, but still the acrylic. So, so much thought and consideration into everything. All the touch lights have like these three modes, even the ones on the side of the bed, perfection. And the kitchen in here is so much nicer. The, there's the same size fridge, but a few more amenities like knives and these cabinets open up to some really beautiful glassware. Here is the solar oven, which we did not explore, but it's cool that it is there. And then the basics. And then down here is much more organized silverware and stuff. And then plates, bowls, and the trash is down here. 
And then, last spot along the back here is a place for you to hang some more stuff, put your suitcases. There's just a lot more space overall because of this really awesome block that they've put in the middle here to essentially be walls and all the units. It's very modular and I just think it's awesome. So I'll be honest, at the $350 price point and a two night minimum, which means this trip costs us close to $1,000 for two nights in Lago Vista, Texas, which is about 45 minutes from anywhere, I was kind of prepared to not love it. And I didn't love the first dome. There were just enough lacks that it didn't feel like it met the 350 price point. This one, I think it's close. It is beautifully done, very thoughtful, and I loved it in here. Jacob, what did you think? It was much better than the first one, that's for sure, but some of the stuff is a little bit unintuitive. A good example would be like the bathroom light switches being on the outside of the mm -hmm. room. The fact that my towel was still wet because there's no place to really hang it up. Didn't like the shower thing. Still no real place to cook, aside from the grill. Yeah, and you can't really make sides on a, on a grill, so we had to go into town which only has a couple of things. So we basically had to go into Austin, which was 45 minutes away. You're not really remote enough to get like the whole away experience, especially when you can hear other people talking. And you're also chained to the fact that if you want to eat, you either have to bring like dry goods mm -hmm. or you have to go into town a couple times a day. Well, how are you gonna cook dry goods? Well, that's what I mean though. Like you have to eat like donuts or something. Like oh, okay. I thought you meant like pasta. No. I'm like, we can't cook pasta here. No. That'd be crazy. I, you ate like Danishes for breakfast. Yeah, I did. Um, and they would, and they were delicious. All right, so this is the dome. Um, nothing is perfect, but I was extremely satisfied here, uh, especially, and I loved looking at it from the lens of it now an Airbnb host as well as a guest. It was an expensive experience, and I'm not sure I would duplicate that again soon for, you know, a $980 price point, but I'm really glad we came and experienced it, and I, I really liked it. Maybe I will have a dome of my own one day. I don't know. This definitely enlightened me to some of the quirks and negatives of dome living. Oh, I should also mention, there are a lot of heated blankets everywhere, and the place does not seem that well insulated, so I think in the colder months, it probably gets very cold in here, just like yesterday when it was hot. It was hard for the AC to keep up, to keep us cool in here when this part was so hot. But yeah, we really enjoyed it. Um, if you would like to check out this place, I will link their description down below. If you'd like to check out my place, I will link my Airbnb down below. But it was lovely and I would honestly recommend it. All right, see you guys. There are also some other lovely things on this campus we didn't quite get to explore slash want to. There are apparently hammocks and a fire circle with Adirondack chairs and some other lovely like places to sit in the trees here, which would be really cool. But for now, we gotta out.